let's just get greasy. Let's get it. Let's go. What up, gearheads? Welcome back to another episode on Katana Garage. Um, today I'm going to be shooting uh, a little video showing you guys the process I take to assemble the connecting rods onto the piston crowns. Let's just get right into it. Let's get greasy. Okay, so now we're on the bench. Let's go ahead and uh, get these uh, pistons properly uh, installed. So first, you're going to need a little small pick. I'm really not going to use this. I'm only going to be using it to verify uh, that my clips are actually in place. Um, I'm using for the installation uh, today on my build, I'm using the Wiseco, uh, I think this is a 46, 4640 uh, steel here. No, actually, it's 1545. Yeah, so I went with a bigger, uh, a, a, a slightly stronger uh, metallurgy, I guess you'd call it, because my application on the B18 is going to be seeing some heavy boosts. So I wanted to be sure that um, I got some reliability and some durability on the track. So um i'm using this piston uh first thing you want to do is locate the uh the valve relief ports um to their respective locations so uh the big ends the big valve relief ports are going to pretty much be indicating your in intake uh valve reliefs and the small ones are going to be your uh, exhaust so um with this setup um you want to go ahead and grab your uh connecting rod here's my connecting rod that i'm using i'm using the alpha pro series uh, from skunk 2 and this is 11 this is 1130 steel so i'm using some strong stuff get what i'm saying and these come equipped with the arp um bolts so how you want to properly uh set the angle on this is there's some notches inside the uh get some light here there's some notches inside the connecting rod these notches need to be facing outwards off the block rather the exhaust side so um what you want to do is you want to set your piston crown to make sure that the intake valve relief ports the bigger one are are facing towards the intake side of the engine block so you're going to set that there just keeping that in mind and then secondly once again the notches on the connecting rod are going to be facing outwards of the engine block as far as representing the direction of the exhaust okay so now that we got that established we're going to go ahead and grab our uh, sir clips and we're just gonna it's gonna open this up here here's my little pick uh, Alright, so now we got our uh, circlips. And I'm using using Wiseco circlips as well as Wiseco S733 uh, wrist pins. Okay, so these are heavy duty wrist pins that I'm using. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm using the Lucas Assembly Lube. You want to go ahead and uh, you don't have to do nothing too crazy. So remember, you, remember the direction of your uh, valve relief ports. So I'm gonna set the valve relief ports away from me, indicating the intake side, because that's how it is on the Honda. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of assembly loot into the, the bores. Just like that. And then I'm gonna be uh, installing my first, my first circlip. Get my hands clean there and don't worry about getting any lube inside the groove or anything like that i mean if you really want you could go ahead clean it out if you really want and this is just for guys that are gonna probably hit me in the comments and be like hey man what'd you do why'd you grease it up it really doesn't matter it's not gonna come out so you're gonna hold the uh the open end you're gonna direct it inside of the piston it's pretty pretty easy and make sure you hold it because this thing is spring loaded so you direct it inside and just kind of guide it in into the groove and then you hear it snap into place once you clip it in just like that this thing is not going anywhere all right so you want to install the first one as far as to give you some kind of uh, pivot point when you uh, install the wrist pin along with the uh, connecting rod so Went ahead and greased it up some more. And then, 
go ahead and verify your locations of your relief valves. It's, it's important that you make sure that the, the, the location of your relief valves are, are properly oriented as far as where which direction they're going. So secondly, go ahead, grab your wrist pin and just give it a nice little dab, swirl it around. Also, it's good to lube this. It eliminates uh, a dry startup on your initial first startup. So make sure that your uh, ex the notches on the connecting rod are facing outwards towards the exhaust side. So once again, we're verifying the big, the big, big valve relief ports go to the intake. And the notches on the connecting rod face outwards like that. So there we go. We're just gonna slide our wrist pin in. I use the other hand, I'm right handed. <clears throat> Just like that, slide it through the board connecting rod and onto the wrist pin. Flip it over, make sure that everything is uh, corresponding. Like I said, intake relief ports pointing towards the engine or towards the back of the engine, you may say, towards the firewall. And then the exhaust relief ports should be lined up with the notches on the connecting rod. Notch here exhaust relief port see notch notch exhaust relief intake relief so now that we got our wrist pin installed let's go ahead and uh install our our, our second uh and last circuit and we're going to do it pretty much the same way that we installed the previous circuit and i just like to face them upwards like to face the opening end upward into the bore of the wrist spin bore onto the uh, piston skirt. So here we go. Just like that, you will hear it click in there and you go ahead and verify that it's in there with your uh, little pick. Be sure not to scratch the piston. This is why I do not recommend using a screwdriver or anything like that. I've installed Molly pistons before with Molnar connecting rods, and they are pretty stiff when you start stepping up into the V8 um, drag racing world. However, it's still possible to do it with your fingertips. It might hurt a little bit, but I mean, it's way safer than nicking or burring up the, the piston and causing it to scratch the cylinder walls upon operation. So here we go. Give it a good work in, make sure nothing flies out. Everything sounds nice and stiff and solid. Feels nice and smooth. Also make sure that your oil holes are nice and clean. And there we go. So I'm just go ahead and uh, install the rest of them in that order. I'm gonna move in uh, pretty fast. So let's do that. Grab the bolts. Not gonna put fastener lube on them just yet because I haven't installed the bearings yet and I haven't cleaned the uh, bearing and the journal end of the big end, the rods. So there we got, we got the two over there. Go ahead, grab a piston out the box. That. Got a wrist pin here. Wrist pin. And star clips. And piston. Go ahead and uh, get this back here. Really love the design on these pistons. Uh, from a Seco, pretty cool, really like them. And for the price, can't go wrong. They're not cheap, but they're not super expensive. So I definitely recommend uh, 
running with circles. For me, I did a lot of research before I actually decided on what um, internals I wanted to run. And for me, Wissekos are my go-to setup for um, turbo uh, tuner application. I know they make some good stuff for um, the Hemis and stuff like that, but I like I like Molnar and like MMX stuff for the Hemis. Shout out Dave Weber one time and Byron from over there, the Modern Muscle Extreme. Here we go. Now, got those clean. Let's grab a clip on. And Skunk 2 as well did uh, pretty well on packaging. And this is their newest uh, connecting rod available for the B18 blocks. And get this cleaned up a bit. Get the board clean because you don't want any dirt, anything. And the, the oil that they have on there, the lubricant, just to protect... Uh, the uh, metal from uh, rusting or anything, so you want to clean that off as well. Get that nice clean of the microfiber, and yeah, they did say these things are pretty, uh, they're pretty pressed on in there, but we'll get them out later. Get them out later. Go ahead and uh, check where location of our relief valves location of the uh, notches of the connecting rod slide in our first wristband this is just how I do it a lot of people do it differently so to each his own kind of use my middle finger to guide it in on the bottom And I guess these notches here or for when you wanted to pull it apart. If you ever wanted to take apart your engine and pull it apart, uh, you can do so. Okay, let's just go ahead and uh, assemble and install the bearings. Uh, for my specific application, I am using the King Racing bearings. So I'm using the, the high performance uh, bearings. I forgot the name of these ones. These ones have a special name here. Let's see. Uh, break it open nice packaging oh. so yeah these are the king xp series this is what i uh this is what i want to use uh it's pretty much uh, used by all the nascar drivers and engine builders so i wanted more durability so i went ahead with the xp series so yeah um let's go ahead and just pop these bad boys into their uh, respective uh connecting rods we got two four six and eight respectively let's go ahead and get those installed real quick So yeah, before you actually go ahead and install these, it's a good practice to uh, clean them because they come pre-oiled from the factory uh, with some form of oil, I guess, to uh, slow the rust because it is still, as you can see, it's got some kind of stuff on it. I'm going to get the camera before you see that. Yeah, so this is a good reason why you always want to clean your bearings before you go ahead and install them. No idea. Yeah, this looks like some kind of uh, chemical that they put on it to slow the rust. So let's go ahead and take them out the original packaging. And then when I clean them, I'm just going to go ahead and put them back in the tray. You know, trying to trying to be organized. Oh, they even came with numbers on them. Nice. Nice. So here we go. Let's grab uh, my microfiber. Oops. And some brake clean. And get that going. I got some brake clean. Just gonna put it on the microfiber itself. 
and then just uh, clean them down. Nothing too special. Just make sure uh, they're nice and clean. Yeah, it looks pretty darn clean to me. That and they are coated black. Not sure why they're coated black. I don't think it matters that they're coated black. Yeah. Nice and clean bearing. There's no oil, no debris. There's another one. This one's dirty. Yeah, you don't need much. You don't need to scrub them or anything like that either. Just need to just clean them up, clean off the, the oil and residue that came from the factory. Really. No biggie. Yeah, these bearings do look good. They do look good. There will be no, absolutely no lubrication necessary on the back side of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our uh, piston connecting rod assembly. Remove the bolts. I'm using the ARP 2000 bolts. Yeah, they came with the, uh, the Alpha Pro Series connecting rods. And you want to repeat the same step for the back end of the, or the big end of the connecting rod. You want to make sure that you clean it up nice and good. You don't want any debris on the back of here. Also, the connecting rod end cap, go ahead and get that clean as well. Absolutely no debris. There you go, so that's clean. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and install the bearing. So you wanna grab the bearing and you wanna make sure that this little tang, if you can see that, there's a little tang right here. You wanna make sure that this tang is lined up with the notch on the bearing. This is how I do it. I just drop it in there, flush one side, then pretty much just press the other side in, just like that. And uh, when you're done, make sure that uh, you're lined up properly. Um, before that, um, these, these, yeah, these ones, they have oil holes on them. I'm not quite sure why, because my connecting rods don't have oil holes on them. But I guess they have oil holes if you were using like a B16 high compression. Uh, in my case, this is a B18B low compression, so I don't need oil entering from the bottom of the block to uh, the connecting rod. So, yeah, I guess that's one good observation. So when you get done assembling it, it should look like that flush and square into the bore of the connecting rod big end. So go ahead and put that there and line up the notch. At the other end on the connecting rod just like so and set it down just like that make sure it's seated in there all the way and when you're done it should look like that, all square in the board. No protrudings, no lips, everything should be flat. Look at that. That, go ahead and make sure this one's centered down. Then once you get them down, verify your locations on your caps, as well as the locations on the connecting rod. So here we got a, a number, I don't know if you can see that. There's some mm -hmm. there. That number there. You want to line it up to the corresponding number on the connecting rod. There it is. Boom. So here we go. So you can see that? It's on there. Make sure your bearing is still stationary. It hasn't moved. Uh, 
and then go ahead and just install your bolts for now. We're not gonna put any fastener um, lube on it right now because we're not ready to install them yet. We're just gonna prep them pretty much. Okay, so there's your, that's how you uh, install the bearings into the uh, connecting rod. So you just wanna repeat the steps for the other three or however much pistons you got. Yeah.